Uh, okay, guys, welcome to podcast episode number 26. Uh, I'm your farmer, local modern farmer, farmer Amir, with my co host. With my co host. Gorov Man, the winemaker. <laughs> Gorov Man, the winemaker. Today we are on a new train. We're on a train of having some focus with our podcast episodes, so I put some focus towards it. Um, and one of the topics that we wanted to focus on was content creation. So the focus I put towards this podcast episode before actually sitting down is all about how to get your marketing on point for your company. And I, I organized it in six simple steps in regards to how to get yourself going. Anybody can do this for their personal brand, their company, their bakery, their flower shop, their winery, their farm, any single thing out there. Every single person from their day to day has stuff to post, has shit to tell people about, has all this content at their fingertips and has a very powerful tool, the size of a, a supercomputer that they used to have during Ronald Reagan's time. That is your cell phone. So it's early morning. We're starting off real early today. Help. Uh, <laughs> 7.53 a.m. Okay, you ready to go? Yeah. Should we get right into it? Stop shaking the table. Listen, it doesn't matter if I shake the table. The mic's, the mic's freestanding. We upgraded our equipment a long time ago. Get your shit together. Oh right? You don't, even, you, don't even, you don't even can wine. Doesn't make a difference. What, well, canning wine? No, this. <laughs> oh, I was about to say. This guy made us do a taste test. Yeah. Yeah, that's the best part. That's the best part. This guy. Yo, I remember that completely. You first, you first off, you sat down the on that episode. Sucked. You sat, we the sat down on the episode. Sucked. Listen, stop, stop talking over me, okay? We sat down on the episode and I discussed how a canning wine was the new best thing, and I went and ta- saw the old, old Abbey Ale Brewery, and I talked to him about it. And then I sat and I told you all the things that I believe in for canning wine. And the following episodes after that, you brought in wine to taste in cans. And I didn't even freaking pick up on the point that you were actually in love with my idea. And that I said at first you were upset. Great. <laughs> <laughs> okay, content creation. Let's get into it. Let's get it go. Do you have any questions? Yeah, go on. No. You have any ideas? I, I know all the answers. Oh, yeah, I think content and content creation is important because it helps you gain attention in your community via some of the most main channels that we consume on a day to day basis, right? So it could be Instagram, Snapchat, YouTube, anything, Facebook, LinkedIn, all these things, Twitter, all these things are, are apps that are within something that 99% of the North America has in their hand or pocket at all times. That statistic is not proven. <laughs> but we have many, 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 many people that are your customers have access to a phone that are consuming content on, a, on the time that they wake up to the time they go to sleep, okay? So you as a employer or someone who's trying to sell or get something from the community, or a customer base that's locally between you should build in your mind that how to win against your competition is by having more attention within that same target media target market that your company or competitors are targeting towards or marketing towards. So attention is key. Any points to touch on for there? Well, you can be looking at me looking at me like a little freaking sheepling the whole time. Oh, we're good. All right. So how to get this whole whole thing on the boat here and how I started with all this is step number one, okay? I think this is important. It is happening at the same time step number two is happening. But step number one is about consuming content of someone who can be your guru, who can be your mentor, who can be your role model, who can be your coach, but consume their content on a regular basis. I don't care. If it's paid or not paid, ideally you'd want to consume someone's content who's free because I don't believe that you need to go and consume someone who's paid online when there's when there's people like Gary Vee, Tony Robbins, um, what's that? What's the other guy name? I forgot. But Grant Cardone. Yeah, Grant Cardone, and there's one other guy that you know the kind of pudgy guy. What's his name? David Metzler or something like that. I have no idea. He's great. Is. All these all these people talk about content and creating content in a very 
similar way, but then they all have their own twist on it. So if you open up your phone and you, you listen to podcasts on a regular basis, or if you're on YouTube and you watch YouTube, you know, before you go to sleep or whatever it is, but do it daily, make it a part of your routine and get that started. One, it motivates you and it gets you moving towards that goal, but it also grounds you in the foundation of why you're actually doing it and it provides you conviction. So those two things are very important for you to actually, you know, steadfast and stay true to the goal of creating content because you're going to get tired. You're going to get bored. But once you're learning and you're, you're listening to these guys and if they're creating actually valuable content, the number one thing for me is Gary V. If you're listening to these people and you're, they're creating valuable content, you'll stay motivated. Even after four years of starting this or three years of starting this and getting at it, I still listen to Gary V. Not on a daily basis, but I'd say on, a, on an off daily basis via a podcast because it still provides me value in my day-to-day -day basis of what I'm actually doing for marketing. So number two, it's happening at the same time number one's happening. This is starting a consistent posting routine or schedule, but it's gotta be consistent. And I don't care if you're posting one time a day or if you're posting four to five times a day. And nor do I care if you're posting on LinkedIn, Instagram, or Facebook. Post on whatever you think is more applicable to you. And if you're wondering, oh, what's more applicable to me? Google it, look up on um, YouTube. What What is LinkedIn used for? What is Facebook used for? What's the target market media for? Them? Target market for them. And if they stick into your regimen, post on whatever that is, that number one number one social media application and your top priority and then go to the second one and post the same exact content on the second priority thing. I believe in Instagram and Facebook are very powerful tools. Facebook is a freaking genius of a company. Their ads pro, uh, ads offering or uh, program or tool, uh, ads tool that they offer is very, very targeted. They actually have employees that will help you with doing a better job in ads and there's so many people that use Facebook on a daily basis to make uh, million dollar companies from scratch overnight. So there's a lot of tools and resources on YouTube, etc., to learn about those things. So I think that Facebook and Instagram are very well grounded. Don't think they're, they're going to be leaving anytime soon. Um, they are maturing and they're adapting and changing at all times. Look at Instagram and what they did with Snapchat. When Snapchat got released and they started posting or Snapchat became something, Instagram's like, oh, I need to have stories that disappear after a little while. So that's that's obviously something cool. But what posting on a regular basis does, it teaches you about the feedback of the content you're posting. Don't have an affinity towards any of the posts. Post whatever comes to mind that is relative to you and your daily daily struggles of being an entrepreneur, or a nurse, or a teacher, or a winemaker, or a farmer, whatever you are and what you do, if you wanna get attention, and you wanna be, you're heading towards this goal of creating content, you need to post to learn about how each of these apps work, how your content is related to your customers, what is more engaged in, and after a little bit of a while, for me it took about a year, of posting to myself, I realized what the patterns were and what worked well. I knew what kind of post would get 100 likes, 200 likes, what kind of post would get only 10 to 20 likes or 30 likes. Um, and then just from that feedback, you realize, oh man, I should be posting more pictures. For me, it was posting more pictures of mom or people who are related to the business and telling more of a compelling story in the captions, whereas like a illustrative post did not do as well. You know, so that's what I learned from posting consistently on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, I learned about what worked well and how to post it and what didn't work well and what not to post. So that's very, very important, okay? I think we should get a farm dog. Farm dog? Dude, that, that would go viral. Exactly. We need a farm dog. We need a farm dog. Let's get one. Yeah, adopt an older one. Okay, they, they are set in a ways, um, most of the time they have kind of grown out of that puppy phase and not as, as active as energetic. So this is kind of what you want. But they still are just as loving and when you want to go have fun with them, they will. Yeah. But they're not as needy, right? You find one that used to live like on a farm or something like that, or open space, lives to be outside. You're flexing. That's there you the go. one. Alright. Feed us some good stuff.
He'll be happy as a clam. Yeah. Get a farm dog. Call him Merlot? Or hollow? How about you call him wine in a can? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's very important. This number, step number, uh, or not step number two is very, very, very important. I think step number two is the most important step of the six-step process of creating content and posting consistently. Because what it allows you to do is to figure out exactly how to do the rest of this process on your own without any other person, like without anything else needed. I don't even care if you don't even do step number one. It doesn't matter to me. But if you go and say, okay, I'm gonna post on Instagram every single day for the next three months. Every single day I'm gonna post on there. Ideally I would like for you to post more than one time a day, but every single day I'm posting one time. By the end of those three months, you will be able to understand the ins and outs of that app from a creator, not a consumer. And that will help you pick up on how a consumer looks at an app and what triggers them to engage with a post because that engagement and those likes is a sense is 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 a direct reflection of your attention within that local community it is not the followers it is not the followers don't get it twisted okay because someone could have a hundred thousand followers or ten thousand followers whatever is relative in your community and they don't have enough engagement, nor are they posting consistent enough. If you don't tell your story, and your story is not compelling within your local community base, it doesn't matter how many followers you have, you won't be able to get that, that action you want your customers to take. They have to literally fall in love with your brand and that's something you understand after you do three months of posting. It's one thing to say that you understand now, but you don't understand that until you've actually done those three months and you've said to yourself, okay, I want people to come for a meetup. I want people to uh, buy this product. I want people to um, come here for a tasting of wine or come to my farm to learn about veggies. And posting consistently for those three months and a portion of the three months being devoted towards that goal of what you want and getting that feedback, you then realize how powerful those tools are of telling a story, documenting, and being consistent. But you don't until you do it. That's that's why you don't post on a daily basis. Gravy. Okay. So after you've done that, shots fired. <laughs> yeah, after you've done shots that. Shots fired. Right there. But listen, listen. One thing that you might be thinking already, and whoever is listening right now might be thinking, shit. That's a lot of work, dude. I don't want to sit there. I don't want to post daily. I don't want to, you know, be creating content all the time. Listen, the, there's a light at the end of the tunnel. You don't always have to do it, okay? There will come a time when someone be able to pick up your slack and do the hard work for you so you can focus on just the essentials. And the essentials are posting and telling your story the way that it is meaningful for the company. That's what you learn from this feedback. And the non-essentials is something that you can hire for and now is the time to hire you've done the you've done the posting for that little time you learned what works for you um you consumed all this content you have some gurus you're following excellent now what you have to do is because i don't think that majority of the people who are going to start posting are photographers or are uh, videographers or know how to design great content so now it is what you should be doing is hiring someone a low budget someone Ideally from high school or from just just got out of high school and is is dipping their waters in graphic design or photography or videography Who is interested in getting a close to minimum job just so they can put on their resume that they created content for a company That's all they need to put on the resume. Okay, if someone's like, yeah, I want to create content for a company That's something that I want to resume. You should hire them. I don't care if they are something who is completely different than what you and your company are, you should hire them and you should require them to create content for you on a consistent basis. So creating content and posting content is very different. And now creating content, I would say, is the majority of the time that takes to actually post stuff. So this is going out and taking a photo of something which is happening at your farm or at your business that is meaningful for consumers. What's step three? Step three is hiring someone. 
Hiring someone. Yeah, hiring someone. Okay. Oh, you didn't write it down. That's why you lost. Okay. Hiring someone, and this is this is about getting Shots someone. Shots fired. Getting someone in the door who is willing to create constant, uh, content on a consistent basis for you. I don't care if it's every Saturday, Sunday, because the high school student, that's the only time they have free. Or if someone who's university who wants to come in a part-time in the evenings. Whatever it is, it doesn't matter how dumb it is, they need to do it, and you need to be able to post. And then you might think, hey, man, I'm ready to hire someone, but what should I have them post? What should I have them uh, create content about? Well, all those answers come from step two. You'll get feedback. You'll know what works. And that's what you should have the, the, the person you hired focus on. And you might say, well, I don't want it to be very, you know, um, fake. Don't be fake. Make sure you focus on documenting, meaning that if you're, if, if we're up here and we're shooting this podcast, this is a piece of content that can someone, we can just take a picture like Jason can take a picture of us and, and, and in the caption it could say, we just finished our 25th podcast and we posted it on our social media. We hope you guys are very interested and, and are following along with our journey. We appreciate the support. That is a piece of content because that's what we do the day to day. If you're a printing shop, you should create content about how a printing press works, what how you even make money, whatever it is. It's all content. So just like, look, you pulled your phone out and you're recording, that's a piece of content. And so you're we're creating content of you creating content, of you creating content, of us creating content. Look at that, all right? So everything's content. Make sure it's real. Make sure it's you. Tell your story. It's the easiest way to be consistent, okay? So hire someone to help you do that. Number four is also about hiring someone to help you do it. But this, I think, comes after you understand how to work with, how to separate yourself from creating content and posting content. And I don't think that you're really able to separate yourself with creating content and posting content until you understand how to do it poorly. And so step three is about managing an employee who comes in for marketing to help you with marketing, but doing it poorly, or step three is, but step four is doing it well. And the way you do it well is by hiring someone in the graphic design department in your university that's locally near you. You should ideally like someone who went to that, who went to school there, or who is going there, who has been there in the past year or so because they're fresh they're like they are number three is like a steak that you just get from safe on foods where step number four is like a steak you're eating while you're at a restaurant it's packaged up it's well prepared it has all the right garnishes it is seasoned to perfection and it has you know it's it's well or it's medium rare for me anyways um, but it's it's cooked perfectly and that's the type of person you need to hire next because step three, you'll figure out that, man, this person is not working for me. One or 10, or, uh, 10 or nine out of 10 times, you'll figure out this person that you hired in step three is not the right person that fits for what I want them to do. Their vision is not aligned with mine. They don't have an eye for what I'm looking for. Where step four is about hiring someone who's done it well and that person will have their own camera. So you'll, you'll have a requirement in your po- job posting say, must have your own DSLR. They will have their own ability. They'll know exactly how to um, um, use the angles, use lighting. They'll know how to design and use Photoshop. And they'll know a bit about branding. They'll know a bit about um, posting on IG. Maybe they already have a reputable Instagram that you could you know, ask them for information or what works for them. So these things are something that, that you're able to fine tune and finesse yourself to become something better than you currently are, or just like, you know, poor looking images, like not poor, like unesthetically pleasing. The content's great, and that's what matters. But this last 10 or 15% is what takes you to 100%. That's what creating uh, really aesthetic content is. Don't get it twisted. 90, 90% of the content you're posting is about what it actually is, opposed to how it actually looks. The last 10% is about the aesthetics, and that's what hiring number in step four is all about. Yes, my friend. You asked the question. So let me break this down. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. So I want to start with step three. So step three, you're saying, is hire someone so you can get to step four. Yeah. Who you know, this is the right person. This is person is qualified. Yeah. So what about growing the person to step three to step four? Is that a possibility? Who's someone who does not have the income to hire this person? 
stuck with this person wants to grow them to step four? I don't think that the income that you're paying for for step three, step four is much different or so that the cost is, is much different. Like we have hired employees who are just inside the graphic design department, like just started the first semester and we've paid them close to minimum wage because they're willing just to get through the door. I yeah, think but ha- what is what is the value of growing that person to step four versus hiring someone to step four? What is the value of growing someone to step four opposed to hiring someone to step four? I think that value... Because ideally, if you grow someone from, from step three to step four, they already know your business. They've already worked on the business. They know what you want versus retaining step four. That's awesome. Okay. It's awesome if you can hire someone that's in step three that's willing to learn and 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 idolize their craft to get to a step four person but i think that you might have to weigh out your costs and benefits of actually hiring someone fresh and new who's already had that training opposed to spending time and money and resources to hire someone to get to step four because you as an individual are not a marketing genius or a professor who's been teaching these students, ideally, on a day-to-day basis. You, as a person, are developed or devoted to your craft, and you've decided to take marketing to the next level, but posting consistently, okay? So you don't, I don't think that you may, will really have that time or the energy. If you can, and if that you see that there's a possibility to do that, I would ideally say, hell yeah, let's do it. You know what I mean? So you're saying going from this person to hire someone who fits the number four is very difficult. I would say it's, it's very hard. It's very, very hard. You, it's just someone who comes in who has a different type of eye, such as that. that's that's the person that you need. Like someone who comes in from the graphic design development program has a different type of eye and has a knowledge behind them. They can speak the lingo. They've done it in the past for themselves. They ha- they know the way around a camera. It's like hiring someone. Like I don't know what would you compare. It's like hiring someone who hiring someone who works at a, at at like a Italian coffee shop. Whereas like you hire someone to make you a cup of coffee. You could both do the job, but it's not the same. Great. One other step I want to touch on. It's my friend. So I'm very. I'm very attuned to the words you use because the words you use are a big thing, okay? <clears throat> Not just a mere man, but everybody. So you said you want someone who knows what you want to do and then you want to tell them how to do it. But I would go back and say, you need, you need to explain to this person and get them on the same page of why we're doing this then you tell them how to do it, then you tell them what to post and what to create. Beautiful strategy. Because when they know why to do it, they already have that mindset in their brain and they'll come to you with ideas and they'll be ready to uh, contribute in a way that's exciting for them because they get, they get hyped about, if they believe in your why, that inspires them so that they're hyped about posting content and then they're able to listen to you be like, oh, how do I do this? How do I do that? And they'll be like, oh, I'm going to post this. I love that. I think that's excellent. That's You You have been reading that one book. Yeah. What's it called? Start with why. Start it's with called why. the golden circle. Yeah. Inside the golden circle is why, right? And then another layer is how, and the outside is what. So you have to start with why, how, what. I think that I'll probably be listening to you on a podcast, but essentially... The why strategy of what you're talking about is something that I practice daily with anybody that's working with me because I try to get them on the same train that I'm on. I need to communicate that that why to these people just like you need to communicate the why to the family about what you're doing for marketing or for wine. Just I need to communicate the why about strawberries to everyone. So everyone's on the same train that we're moving in the same direction towards the same goal and then we can all add to that train opposed to just being passengers. 100%. Right? So that's, 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 I think that's, that's awesome. So that's really good advice that when you are sitting down and training that person or sorry, when you're sitting it down with that employee, even at the interview, you should be explaining why they're sitting down and why you're actually hiring someone in this position to, so they can understand 
what is that you actually want from them, right? Yeah. Is that how it works? Okay, good. Okay. Anybody who wants like a 10 or 15 minute clip on Start With Why, go to TED Talks and look up Simon Sinek. He has probably one of the highest viewed TED Talks ever. So go and view that. <coughs> Money in the bank. Okay, so number three, four, five all have to do with managing, right? Okay. Yep. And number six do as well. Because at the same time, what you've been doing is that you still have that feedback loop going. So this is why number two is so important, okay? You've you've hired someone number three, you've posted their content. You hired someone at number four, you posted their content. Now, after you've figured out that this person is works for you and they you and them are a good, you know, companionship of of, of posting and creating content, you need to direct that person's focus towards documenting and creating content, which is really in tune with the feedback loop. So what I'm saying is, number five is all about focusing back on that feedback loop and what really matters to you. You can get so bogged down by the branding and the colors and the aesthetics, making sure that you have a routine for what you're posting on Instagram so your Instagram feed looks a certain way, like an art gallery, but none of that shit matters. None of that shit matters. Only thing that matters is that your content is of value to the consumer. So pay attention to that feedback loop, stay grounded in it. And that's what five is all about is being authentic to what you're in your company is about documenting all that stuff and making sure that you are continuously involving that feedback loop in part uh, into your journey and getting that across to your, your employees. And if that employee does not understand that, I don't care how nice your pictures are, they gotta go. So essentially, you give the consumer what they want. Yes. You give the consumer what they want by yes. listening to them. Yes. The feedback is what you're doing. The feedback loop is actually listening. I would like to change a little bit about your sense. You said give the feedback, you give the consumer what you want by listening to them and being true to your company. Yeah. Okay. Authenticity. Authenticity. Okay, so number six, final step, guys. If you've followed along this whole time, bless your soul for my rambling talks. Okay, number six is about setting up a Google Drive. I'm saying Google Drive, but it could be um, a Dropbox or uh, some other management thing that people use online. I just know the main two ones, Dropbox and Google Drive. Setting up a Google Drive, it allows you to have all that content at your fingertips right away I did this in the past I did this at the at the the three three mark strategy three mark three mark I did this at point three for that initial employee when I hired way back when I was in, involved in the process myself but I didn't really fine-tune it until we got to point five whereas hiring someone who's from graphic design area because I didn't really understand how to organize the content where it fit the needs of me posting on a consistent basis. That's what I think you should organize the content in the Google Drive as. One, the most important thing is that that content should be available at your fingertips from anywhere in the world at any time, as long as you have a data connection, okay? So you can access it from your phone where you'll be posting from and in like seconds, if you have the time to do it while you're on the pooper, do it. If you're on a plane, do it. If you're sitting there waiting for a burrito, do it. So you have access to it and that just reduces all the barriers of you posting on a consistent basis and makes your life way easier. And ideally, if you are not be able, able to post content, what's the, point of the re what's, the, what's the point of the rest of the steps in this process? It's irrelevant. So essentially step six is having Google Drive or some other vehicle where you can put all the content that's easily, to, easily accessible. Right away, ready to yes, go. Yes, Very okay. important, okay? That is, that keeps your content safe. It is on the world so you can share it with other people when you are ready to collaborate with other brands. Um, you can look back at the content and then you can also set up logs, data logs that you can have your employees you know, enter on a daily basis. That's what I require of all my employees is when they come in at the end of the day, they have to put in a, a specific like just point form what they did, um, how, how they accomplished it, um, some of the points, because then you can look back at the, the previous year around that time to see where you're at, what was working for you, 
on a day-to-day basis if someone hasn't come in for a week they can look back at the last week's data logs and get up to, p- to page very quickly this is common practices but it can be all stored on that Google Drive that can be a hub for your company um, and I guess you know if you're a business you will have something like this set up already but having on your phone having that easy access bam right away money in the bank I think there's such easy common sense tips but once you explain it in a sort of a system like this to where you can now you can have content ready to go to post on a consistent basis you can you know really do some damage with your, your gaining attention um, and what I would say after step six is that you need to be able to experiment and try new things and be willing to start it all over again from step two it might seem daunting like you know TikTok's out and I created a uh, I created a page I started posting on it I posted maybe 12 times but I fell off and I don't even know what's happening but it's a little nagging voice in my brain saying you should be posting on TikTok or it's actually going TikTok TikTok because it's every single minute day goes by I'm getting behind 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 in regards to being at the front of that industry of, of farming in in that platform of TikTok but I did get a LinkedIn going I did get TikTok going and it is my daily goal I tell myself that I need to be posting on LinkedIn and that voice has not turned off yet in my brain and I will do it on LinkedIn and TikTok I feel so. like there is some ignorance from people who are doing well on Instagram and they don't want to go to TikTok they're like oh Instagram is all I need and then they don't want to do TikTok but what if TikTok takes over the Instagram? I know. Then they'll be freaking dead but in the water. They don't want to do it. I've heard some people yeah. that don't want to do no, it. No, for sure. Because like, oh, they put in so much work on Instagram. Yeah. They don't want to put that work in TikTok. Hundred percent. The TikTok is eventually going to graduate. So, so I, like, when I when I'm when I'm unsure of and new things come up, I come back to step one, which is listening yeah. to content of someone <laughs> who you actually idolize. And so what Gary V says is that even if TikTok dies and it's gone. And Instagram and Facebook are still left. Instagram and Facebook may adjust their platforms to be more like TikTok. And because you've already had so much time, say if you're posting consistently on TikTok, because you've already had so much time and practice on that platform of TikTok and how to create content, you will be so many steps ahead of creating actually meaningful content on Instagram or Facebook when they incorporate portions of the TikTok platform into their platform right now. I think in like the next 10 years, Somebody's gonna buy TikTok. Ten years. I'm just saying, like next next little bit here. I think way way closer than that, but yeah. Somebody's gonna buy TikTok. It's either gonna be Facebook that's gonna buy TikTok, or it's gonna be somebody like Amazon mm. or Microsoft that's mm. gonna buy TikTok. Yeah. Well, Facebook bought Instagram. Remember? Yeah, Facebook Facebook bought Instagram. They tried buying Snapchat for three billion dollars, but then Snapchat didn't sell it. They didn't now, sell it. Now they're worth like twenty two billion. Who Snapchat is? Yeah, something like that. Have you guys seen on Instagram when you open it now? It goes Instagram and, and I know. Goes by yeah. Facebook. Yeah. Yeah, 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 it does yeah. that. It does that. It's trying to keep Facebook relevant. Well, I don't know, man. Facebook's freaking always relevant, to be honest. But Facebook, it's almost discouraging with for like people who used to post Facebook like five, six years ago. Now you have to be able to post ads. Because like, even though you have seventeen thousand likes. That's not going out to all the 17,000 likes unless you create those Facebook ads. Like, they, they don't care. Either they don't care about it or they doesn't get to them. Organically. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. But it, it this can, is where, this it is can where get to them if you create viral content. Thank you guys for listening. This was episode number 26. We just covered content creation. We hopefully it actually adds a little bit of value to your guys' day-to-day strategies of how to do marketing. Um, Content creation is one of the key foundational things that we use for our marketing and how our marketing actually became what it is. Um, I was your co-host on this episode, The Modern Farmer, Amir Man. And your co-host, Gaurav Man. What I'd like to mention is if you're listening to this uh, podcast number 26, go back to podcast number 24, look at the video, um, and these are a couple uh, or a few topics that we're gonna cover. Um, If these get too excited, chime in and uh we could uh possibly do something with you guys yeah and we're obviously there's people who have reached out to us yeah. about being on the podcast themselves like realtors we've had people in the beer industry be a part of yeah. it make sure that if you are interested in reaching out we would love to have you 
But ideally, we are trying to, as you can see from podcast number 24, we are trying to really dumb down and provide you guys simple value and add to your day-to-day basis. So if you're reaching out, make sure you come from the aspect of saying, hey, listen, I do beer and this is how I came from the beer industry and this is how I became who I am. That's what your motive should be, you know? Yeah. If you're a real estate agent, this is why I do real estate. This is what adds value. This is what real estate is in the agriculture industry. I want to provide you guys value. We want those topics. We want all of you guys on here. Hopefully, we can be a voice for farmers in the world. But ideally, I would even love to be a voice for our community locally here in the Fraser Valley, British Columbia, of how farming and modern farming is actually done. Yeah, I want to focus more on step five, on that feedback loop. So if our, if our consumers can get to us, if they want any ideas they want us to cover, um, they think we can do it well, please reach out. Beautiful. And we'll consider all of your all of your suggestions all right have a beautiful day guys see you guys on episode number 27 cheers